Hello, I'm Chris Menard. Welcome to Microsoft Excel video today. I'm going to take a look at data tables in Microsoft Excel, which are not the same as a table in Excel. I actually have made this video before, but it was over four years ago and it's still popular, still on my YouTube channel. I've got a different exercise though, and I'm going to throw a few more extras at you now. Anyway, we're going to look at input cells. We'll look at dependent cells. In case you're wondering what in the world is a data table, I change an input cell, for example, the price in cell B2, and all the dependent cells, the answers will change for me. Cool way to quickly figure out different values at different input cells. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. There are chapters down below. Also, at the very end, I'll pop in and do a house note if you're interested in what a loan would be at different interest rates. So I've got uh, people 100, the price is 400, cost per person is 200, cell B1 through B3, those are called input cells. There's no formulas there. I typed in 100, 400, and 200. Now let's run through the dependent cells real quick. The revenue is the B1, the number of people, times the price. I've already done the formatting in case you're wondering the 40,000's got the comma. The cost is the 100 people times $200 a person. Again, that's a dependent cell. Profit, 20,000, that was B5 minus B6. This obviously should be 50% B7 divided by B5. And again, I've already formatted that. Cool tip, I didn't do this in the previous video. If you wanna know, Chris, how or why are you calling those dependent cells right there? Is there a quick way to see them? Sure. If I go to the home tab over in the far right is find and select, go to special, and I'm going to tell Microsoft Excel to only highlight the formulas. Those are my dependent cells right there. The input cells I know I've got some text over here. Technically that is an input cell too, but really it's these right here. So if I highlighted all these numbers and then told Excel, find and select, go to special, constants. Notice it only did B1 through B3, input cells. So we got our input, we got our dependent. So here's why a data table is so cool. Right now I've got this set up for 100 people. But what if at this conference or whatever it is, airplane, airplane flight, what if I really don't know the number of people? I'm just kind of forecasting out and it could be anywhere between 70 people up to 140. So I'm gonna do this in column E. I'm gonna type in the word people, 70, 80. It's up to you what increment you wanna to go to. I could have done 70, 75. I believe I said 140 earlier, so let's take it to 140. Just a quick little bit of formatting there. So here is how you set up a data table. I had to use an input cell in column E and I decided to use people. I could have done price, I could have done cost per person. Doesn't matter. What has to be in cell F1, because this is going to be a one input table, and then I'll come back and do a two input table. What has to be in cell F1 is a dependent cell. So the question is this, if the number of people change, what is it that I wanna know? Do I wanna know the total revenue? Do I wanna know costs, profit, or profit percentage? They're all dependent cells. I wanna know what's the profit. So equals B7, that is called a 3D reference right there. And by the way, that is considered a dependent cell. Now, here comes your data table, the first one. I'm selecting cell E2 to F10. Data tab, data tables fall under the forecast group, but they are in what if analysis, and there is data table. 
I've got two options. And if you recall, I said this is going to be a one column input. And the reason it's column is it's running down column E. In just a second, I'm going to do a column and a row, but right now it's just a column. And remember, we were talking about input versus dependent cells. What input cell is it? Well, it's the number of people. That is cell B1. When I click OK in column F, I'm going to see the profit of those different number of people. There I go. I'm going to just quickly format it because it's going to drive me crazy if I don't. Comma style, lose the decimals. Here's your check figure. We already know that 100 people, our profit's 20,000. 100 people, 20,000 right there. By the way, if you click in here, notice up in the formula bar, it's got that table item listed, which means I can't click on a single cell and press the delete key and delete it. It says you can't change part of a data table. Now, let's say, Chris, I don't care about the number, the profit. I want to know what's the revenue. Well, go to cell F2 and change the 3D reference to another dependent cell equals B5. There you go. Your check figure is 100 people at $40,000. Really cool. I'm a big fan of data tables. All right, here comes a two column data table right now. So I want to know if the price changes and the number of people change. So that's cell B1 and B2. What happens to, question is what happens to what? What happens to our profit? So to keep this simple, I'm going to just do a copy. I'll paste it right here. Actually, I'm going to pull it down one more. Sorry. So I got the number 70 in cell D13. I'm going to go to cell E. There are my people. My price right now is $400. Let's make the price $350 and then go $360. And again, the same as we did before. I'm going to take it out to $430. Perfect. I'm just giving myself a little room to work here. So Now, if you look up above when we did the one input, I did have to do a 3D reference, and I did that in cell F2. <laughs> I still got to do it here for the two input, and I'm going to do it where the, the row and the column intersect, which is going to be cell D12. So equals, again, what is it I want to know that's dependent? I want to know the profit, so it's going to be equals B7. Perfect. You got to highlight again. Here comes a two input data table. Data, what if analysis, data table. Row input, my row is the 350, 360, 370. So that is the price. My column input is still the number of people or participants. Here we go. This should give me the profit at these different numbers. Perfect. Quick, a quick, easy check, by the way, comma, lose the decimals, uh, 100 people at the price of $400, our profit should be $20,000. That is correct. So there we go. Two input data table, one input data table, part of what if analysis in Microsoft Excel, great feature. The bonus is I'm going to quickly throw in a house note for you. And it is on the worksheet called Car House. $40,000 is the loan amount. What we need to borrow to get that house. 30 years on the loan. Interest rate is 4.25%. So what is your loan payment? Equals PMT. Interest rate. We pay our house note monthly. So that's going to be divided by 12. Present value is how much? I'm sorry. NPER is the number of periods. 30 years, but I'm going to do that times 12. I'm paying monthly over 30 years, comma. Last argument you need here, so three arguments, all three are required. Make this a negative. How much money are you borrowing? PV, present value, negative B1. If you don't do the negative B1, it will show that number as a negative. I know I got to pay it, so it's $1,968. Just to be clear, that's not your entire house note. That is just the principal 
and the interest. It is not including uh, your your taxes. It's not including your homeowner's insurance. It's just the principal and the interest. So how much is the total paid? I'm going to pay that number times 30 years times 12 months. So how much interest did you pay over the entire life of the loan? We paid that much and we borrowed 400000 you know this already, the dependent cells, again, have a formula in them. Input cells do not. I could use that find and select. I'm not going to. Here's your one input data table real quick. I want to know, I don't know the years. Let's change the years. I'm going to call this years. I'm going to go 10 years, 15, 20, 25, 30 years. You know what's got to be here in cell E3. It must be a dependent cell. I want to know what my loan payment's going to be. Highlight them. Data tab. What if analysis? Data table. It's running down the column. What is it? I'm looking at the number of years. That happens to be cell B2. By the way, the 10 years should have the highest payment, followed by 15, followed by 20. Perfect. Real quick on the formatting, just to make my life easier. And if you're saying, well, why would you go 10 years and pay that or 15 years and pay that? Well, that's your payment. Look how much interest we're paying right now at 30 years. We're paying $308,000. So let's change this E3 to this dependent cell. Just remember $308,000. Actually, you don't need to remember it because it's right there. And there you go. Look how much less interest you pay because you're paying your loan off earlier. I forgot to show you something. I'm so sorry. I hope someone didn't quit watching. If you don't want to see this number right here, uh, this 3D reference number, format cells, I'll go with the mouse, but it's control and the number one with the keyboard. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Under custom, I'm going to delete it. Look at my sample. That is the number in my sample right up here. Give me three semicolons and that will hide that number. If you're saying Chris one word, just, just do three. That number is still there equals B7, but it is hidden. Control Z to undo it. It beats doing this because you can always change the, the font color and the background color and that change. Sorry, I forgot about that. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great day. I appreciate it.